Several months ago, and hundreds of hours ago, literally, <laughs> I got the idea to resurrect this setup over here that I originally used for doing book top-down book reviews and product reviews and talking head videos. Um, but I wanted to make it bigger. I wanted to make it better. I wanted to trade up and improve my skills. And although in every single time I tried something new, I could get one thing to work, something else always had to be sacrificed as a result of it. And I was getting extremely discouraged and frustrated with it, trying to cram too much into a small space. And it wasn't until I reached out to a company called Bololo that I discovered through the This Is E YouTube channel, Easgrin, thank you for your amazing videos, that I realized that's the missing piece of the puzzle. I needed something that was designed beautifully, that was well-crafted and was fully modular as a desk setup accessory. So I reached out to them. They have been patient. They've been accommodating. They've been incredibly kind. And if it wasn't for their contribution to this, then none of this would be possible. Now that I have access to all of this stuff, let's also making it a, a badass PC gaming setup. And I ended up rebuilding my PC from scratch to a whole new AM5 setup. I'm going to be sharing all of that with you. So without wasting any more of your time, it is my pleasure to share with you my 2024 recording setup for my beautiful, beloved art studio. Enjoy. Let's start with the desk a solid wood IKEA desktop mounted on a Prime Cable's motorized sit-stand legs. The framework consists of four impact varipoles, two on each side of the desk to support the Manfrotto backdrop arm tucked neatly behind a little ledge. The other one behind my desk supports my top-down light and VESA mounted monitor. My second supports my camera and key light. Moving on to the desk, the foundation of this entire setup is my new Bololo cockpit. When I discovered this beautiful desktop accessory watching This Is E, I jumped at the opportunity to reach out to Bololo directly. This is a far more impressive desk accessory than you might assume at first glance. The foundation of it is a beautiful handcrafted solid wood and metal monitor stand. However, all along the underside, are mounting screws that you can use to add a whole series of beautiful constructed add-ons, allowing you to customize it to your heart's content. In my case, I added the laptop mount for setting your computer up in clamshell mode, nice, discreet, and out of the way. Note that Bololo also have a laptop riser if you prefer using your laptop as an additional monitor. I then added the larger size metal and felt line tray and added a lovely little catch-all for all the remotes for my camera equipment. Being someone who loves pens and journaling, I added the pen cup for my beloved fountain pens and threw in this adorable little HomePod mini stand. I just found out today actually that they have a stand for the large version HomePod as well. Of course, I couldn't pass on the MagSafe iPhone stand either. While preparing this video, I was very excited to find out that they were just about to launch two new highly demanded additions to their lineup. This includes a new MagSafe Apple watch mount. Secondly is the brand new tablet mount. This is very welcome news to me. Being able to have my 6th gen iPad mini at arm's length for accessing my studio lighting app, my title playlist, and to indulge in a few games of chess when taking a break from work. Being a digital painter, this is also a perfect location for my M2 iPad Pro. Of course, this is also the optimal location for your iPad Pro if you use your iPad in extended monitor mode. I realized shortly after setting everything up that with one small tweak, I could turn this entire setup into an all-in-one, not only for shooting video and recording audio, but for editing as well. I learned that the Bololo cockpit was actually designed to have perfect clearance for a Mac Studio for a more discreet and space-saving solution. It's ironic that I've taken advantage of the cockpit for everything but my monitor, which I have mounted on a Veripole behind the desk, 
allowing me to keep it out of range of the camera shot. Moving on to screens. My primary monitor is the Apple Studio Display. I got the original stand swapped out for the VESA mount for this very purpose. Over to the left, mounted on a desk VESA by Chargen Pro, is my iPad Pro. I find it very convenient that I can use it as an extended monitor for my Mac Studio. Directly underneath my Apple Studio display is of course my 6th gen iPad mini. Now, for the foundation of my audio recording setup is the Rodecaster Pro 2. My two main microphones for this setup include my Shure SM7B and my overhead Sennheiser MKH416 shotgun mic. As for monitoring my audio, I have two pairs of Rode NT100Ms. For editing audio, however, my all-time favorite headphones are the Hyphaman Sandaras and the Monolith THX AAA 788 DAC amp. What was originally a huge aperture light dome has now been reduced to a few amazingly versatile flat panels. The Amaran F21X as my key light and the Amaran F21C as the overhead light. My rim or kicker light is a cleverly mounted Amaran T2C, T standing for tube. Note that the tube light grid is sold separately. Lastly, I mounted an Amaran P60X panel light to the ceiling with a camera wall mount, a clever and inexpensive light mounting solution that's solid and reliable. Every light in my studio, including this filming setup, is controlled with the Citus Link app. I can set what's called quick shots, which are pre-configured lighting setups and change my entire lighting setup with the click of a button. Since my entire studio consists of almost entirely Amaran and Aperture lights, I can control my entire studio lighting setup with a single button press. Best of all, being LEDs, the lights produce little to no heat and are in most cases almost entirely silent. Next is cameras. If you watched my original studio setup video, my main camera used to be the Sony a7 III. The a7 III now serves as my top-down camera. My main camera is now the Sony a7 IV. Both cameras connect via HDMI to my two Atomos Shinobi 7s. As you may have noticed before, Bololo also has a 29-inch version of the setup cockpit offered in the same three beautiful finishes, American Oak, American Walnut, and All Black. This is the perfect size for the desk that I teach at, offering me additional desk space for my deeper Cintiq pen display and low-profile mic arm. The 29-inch version offers all of the same patented modular grid design for add-ons as the larger 49-inch version and has perfect clearance to fit a Mac Studio underneath, just like the other one. If you intend on using it with the Mac Studio, however, you'll want to get the standard size desk tray to accompany it because the large tray is a few centimeters too wide to accommodate both. I'm also a huge fan of the standalone headphone stand, being able to hang my AirPods backs while listening to music and drawing, and that is a perfect sized cutout for a larger sized drawing stylus. Time out. You're gonna notice the B-roll at the beginning did not necessarily align fully with all of the footage you've been seeing up until this point. That's a testament to the fact that as I was building and revamping, I was at the same time realizing that there was far more potential to the setup than I gave it credit for. So I decided, or at least I realized, that I could resurrect my old gaming PC that I built years ago, that I presented in a video years ago, and rebuild it from scratch to a brand new AM5 balling gaming PC, resurrect my Steam gaming library, and everything else that was a part of it, and everything fell into place. So. It's my pleasure to share with you not only my productivity setup, but now my absolutely off the charts gaming setup. Enjoy. Let's start with the foundation of this setup. The 49 inch, 240 hertz, 32 by nine, 1440p Samsung G9 OLED. Not only is this monitor an absolute dream, for gaming, but the fantastic and accurate colors, contrasts, and super ultra wide aspect ratio make it an amazing choice for video editing as well, being able to see your entire timeline in one shot. 
Even though it's only 1440p, the high refresh rate and 5120 pixel width means that you're probably better off building a gaming system powerful enough to run a 4K monitor. Being a notably lighter display than the non-OLED G9 version, I could easily mount this on a more budget-friendly VESA arm. Just note that you want one with a longer reach depending on your setup. My only real gripe about the G9 OLED is connectivity with Mac computers. Only M2 Macs support HDMI 2.1. So if you're using an M1 or older, then you're forced to use a display port to USB-C cable, which uses up the only display port on the back of the display, meaning that I have to swap connections between my Mac and PC because I prefer display port for high refresh rate monitors. As for desk pads, I really fell in love with the black and white topographic aesthetic watching desk tour videos and picked up a few of my favorites. This includes white on black and black on white XL desk pads by Gutsy Aiden and the black topo Canyon desk pad from Desker. I recommend Gutsy Aiden desk pads if you want a bolder design and slightly larger size. However, I recommend the Desker desk pad if you want a slightly more subtle design and a smoother overall feel. My headphones of choice, which I've had for years, are the SteelSeries Arctis Pro Wireless, hanging conveniently on the Bololo headphone stand. Moving on to my desk accessories. After testing out numerous mice, desk pads, and keyboards, I settled on the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro for FPS games and the Logitech 502X Plus for games that require macro buttons. And of course, the Razer Black Widow V4 75% keyboard. As you can see, I decided to go with all white peripherals to match my brand new all white gaming build. Although I'm still rocking the original Lian Lee Li Dynamic XL case, which I'm either upgrading to the Lian Lee Li XL Evo or the Height Y70 Touch, everything else has been upgraded to the AM5 Ryzen platform. This includes the ASUS ROG X670E-A motherboard and 32 gigs of DDR5 6000Hz CL30 Corsair Titanium RAM. I decided to swap out my Corsair fans for Lian Lee Li Uni Infinity fans. Being a dedicated gaming only setup, I opted for the Ryzen 7800X3D processor cooled by Lian Lee Li Infinity AIO cooler and the ROG Strix 4080 OC white GPU. Ideally, I would have wanted to go with a 4090, but I'm perfectly happy with the performance of the 4080, being able to run Hogwarts Legacy and Cyberpunk all on ultra settings, ray tracing and DLSS turned on, and hit over 80 to 120 FPS. If I turn ray tracing off, then I can easily hit the 240 cap on my monitor. Now moving on to a few fun extras, you may have noticed the awesome interactive lighting going on around the desk setup. I took advantage of the Black Friday sale and picked up a few Govi RGB IC neon rope lights, a monitor LED, and the Govi glides to add a bit of immersive ambient and interactive lighting when gaming. What's really cool about these lights in particular, including the Govi Y lights and a few other accessories, is that they sync with Razer Chroma RGB effects, adding that interactive lighting to select games like Hogwarts Legacy, Diablo 4, and numerous other titles. They don't only add ambient lighting, but they react to in-game actions like spell casting, low health, leveling up, legendary drops, etc. You can also set the lights to extend the lighting on your monitor, which I really enjoy because it opens up the effect of what's going on in your screen further into your peripheral, feeling more open and impressive visually. As for the Bololo setup, I don't only enjoy having my phone and headphones at arm's reach, but I realized that I could take full advantage of my iPad mini when looking up strategy guides and playthroughs while playing. I've had so much fun building and playing on this new setup, replaying my favorite games and enjoying expansions I haven't had the chance to enjoy, like Phantom Liberty and Baldur's Gate 3, which Rest assured, I can't wait to start playing as soon as possible. On that note, my beautiful ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoyed this presentation. Hopefully I fed you with a few cool ideas, maybe a bit of a purchasing guide if there's any of these pieces you're interested in picking up for yourself. And of course, a huge thank you to Bololo 
for legitimately making this possible. As I mentioned before, I reach out to companies that I believe in and I wholeheartedly support Below and what they've produced, not only for the quality and the amazing design and functionality of their products, but for being really awesome people too. They've been an absolute pleasure to work with. One of the nicest companies, one of some of the nicest people I've ever had a chance to work with. So thank you to that. Thank you very much for joining everybody and happy shopping. Take care.